Sam, so great to have you back for this year's Six Five Summit. This has become a bit of a of, a, of an annual thing for you and I. It is. I love this, and uh, I do. I I genuinely love these conversations. I'm talking to you. Um, let's uh, let's jump in because you know the audience here. I mean, there's so much happening here at the summit. Um, you know, Lattice is a company that, of course, has really grown its presence over the years, known for being a leader in FPGAs, but is also becoming a leader in AI. I mean, you're doing many things in AI. You're involved in data center AI, edge AI. Just give give everybody out there a bit of the background of what you are focusing on across the AI space right now. Yeah, good question. So like you said, there's a variety of places that we play when it comes to AI. So when you look at our AI-related revenue, it falls into, let's say, three buckets. The first bucket being um, we enable a lot of the AI specific servers uh, that are in the data center. So when you think about the AI racks that are there, we play a critical role in control, management, uh, and also security type applications. So um, if you take a a rack, for example, you're going to find a number of Lattice FPJ devices there. And it's not just enabling the AI specific servers. But we're also in the routers and switch cards, uh, NIC cards, et cetera. So we enable a lot of what's happening in the data center with Lattice FPGAs. Now, the other bucket of AI stuff that we work on is think about all the stuff that's happening in the automotive market or industrial market. I think it was Mazda actually that uh, released a press release about how Lattice is enabling their ADAS systems. And what we're doing is we're taking all these sensors that are being deployed across the world, just more and more sensors being deployed. And the the problem statement is that the typical compute accelerator wasn't designed to take in all these different types of sensors. There's so many. It could be an image sensor, uh, gyro. It could be a pressure sensor, temperature. So what we do really well is we take that sensor into our FPGA. And then we aggregate it. We do like sensor fusion. And then we pre-process it. And then we do some of the secret sauce that's needed to go to the GPU. For example, we've got a partnership, a formal partnership with NVIDIA that we can take that sensor data and some of that secret sauce we do is CUDA secret sauce. And then we send it into an NVIDIA compute a GPU and then we can run the AI on the edge. So we do a lot of that, not just in automotive, but in industrial equipment, as you can imagine as well. So we're in the data path of an AI application. Now, the third bucket is, hey, why not do the actual AI on a Lattice FPGA? And there are numerous applications today that are actually putting the inferencing on the FPGA, and that has value as well. FPGAs are reprogrammable. You put your secret sauce, models change, update your models, update your use cases. So where do you find those type of things? Well, if you look at a client device, we talked last year about how uh, Dell is ramping up with XPS uh, models and latitude models. And the Lattice FPJ is right by the camera there doing a lot of the AI use cases uh, in, in a client device. We're also in factories. We do sorting, so object detection for defects. Uh, we're in smart uh, control panels and factories that recognize the operator coming, approaching it, but also making sure he's hitting the right button, that he's not looking somewhere else and hitting buttons randomly. So there's lots of applications where you can actually put the inferencing on the FPGA. And the beauty, again, reprogrammable, update your models, your secret sauce, but very small, very low power. Yeah, I think it's really important too, to, to double click there because people might interpret that as you saying, hey, we are uh, you know, a accelerator or a GPU and really you're a complement, right? In so many cases where some it might be, a, hey, you've got this one or two specific tasks that we can just do better and more efficiently then, you know, and then again, kind of feeding, you know, it's never bad to announce or discuss partnerships that you have with NVIDIA. It seems to be a very popular thing these days, but that you have. And and by the way, I remember for a few years now, because I've come to your big uh, annual DevCon and you've been showing this stuff off where, you know, sensing technologies related to ADAS, because you kind of said, oh, we're helping with ADAS. People go, oh, you're doing ADAS? Well, we're helping with ADAS. Like, we enable it. That's right. Yeah, you're an enabler for it. And without what you do, and I also have, I've seen over the year, you know, for any, anyone out there who's not really super familiar, but like everything that's sort of sensing, you know, a lot of people, I don't know if you've noticed, but I know I, I'm on a new laptop here. Um, that's why it looks so great. I won't say whose laptop it is, but like, 
you know, you walk up to a laptop and you don't touch it and you just get in front of it and it pops up, powers on and does the facial recognition and loads up. Exactly. I think exactly. there's technology from a company maybe like yours that actually helps with that. Or when I'm sitting here working and maybe someone walks up behind me. And yeah, shoulder and, surfing. It's called shoulder surfing. We, we by the way, that. very high vulnerability. Uh, you know, a lot of people think every hack is this really crazy engineering. A lot of it is just uh, users, users uh, being lax in their behaviors. You know, I say it's the stickers you leave on your laptop. It's also just literally having something like a password sitting up on your screen or someone okay. watches you log in and then makes a note. And you guys have built a lot of technology for, for that. So you're really also always complementing, enabling and thinking about things. And that's both AI, but also the power of a specialty FPGA that can sit inside low right. cost, low power. They can handle a workload like that without putting extra uh, cycles on the, you know, the SOC that's being that's used right. for traditional and core applications. And, and you bring up a really good point. Um, when people think about taking AI on the edge, you really have to understand what is that AI application you, do, you want to do on the edge. Are you really after the fastest performance, which comes at a very high cost of power? Or is this application doesn't require that high, it doesn't require a GPU. If it doesn't require a GPU, why pay the money for a GPU? Why take the space of a GPU? Why consume all the power of that GPU, especially for handheld devices or battery operated devices? So there is a spectrum of applications, some that, yes, may need the highest power and performance, but the vast majority that we see working with our customers don't require that GPU type uh, performance. In fact, if you think about the architectures of some of these GPUs, they were mainly architected for more machine learning than they were for inferencing. So if you really want to do inferencing and you want to do it efficiently at a much lower, at which a much better value proposition, which is size and power and cost, then adopt a piece of silicon that's really tuned for inferencing. And that's where our FPGAs on the edge have a, a really good value proposition. Yeah, I love that. And um, I also, I've always been a big fan of some of the security applications you focus on, you know, things obviously where vulnerabilities are high, like in boot, you know, and, uh, yeah. you know, that stuff that FPGAs have been used for, Lattice specifically. Another great example you've shown at your uh, developer events, uh, you know, that I think have been very successful. And I think this really all speaks to the company and its agility, its ability to sort of adapt. When I first uh, was getting to know you, it was very much kind of in the low end. Um, you know, since you've been there and under your leadership and, and the leadership of, of, of Lattice, you've definitely come up market. You've seen a, a gap in sort of the mid market. Um, you know, talk a little bit about kind of how customers, partners, uh, and 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 is sort of driving this agile approach and sort of been shaping your strategy because the strategy yeah. has evolved pretty quickly um, in your space. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to give credit also to the entire organization. We've got a lot of talented folks within Lattice that are really leading us into this new era of. Uh, adapting programmability into multiple types of application. I think one of the good things about what we do is, like you said, we're very focused. If you look at the FPJ market, they're small, mid-sized, and large. And we're really focused on small and mid-range FPGAs. And that's where we believe the core mainstream of FPGA usage is in, in our industry and in the markets. The other beauty of an FPGA is because it's programmable, it's actually a horizontal solution. Like you hear us talking about, hey, we're solving stuff in compute, we're solving stuff in communications, we're solving stuff in industrial, aerospace and defense, automotive, even in consumer. FBGAs can actually do multitude of functions and that goes across multiple end markets. And so whether it be um, bridging, interfacing, motor control, AI, uh, security, like you said, vision type applications, what it allows us to do, which I think is unique to Lattice, is see what's happening across the industry, across all of these end markets. So we get good telemetry on, hey, what are these emerging trends that are coming out? You know, if somebody want to do something that's new, an emerging trend, and they don't have the right solution, we'll use an FPGA. And so working with our customers and working with the system architects, whether it be in compute or comms or industrial, automotive, et cetera, we get really good telemetry of what their challenges are. What are they trying to do? What's the emerging trends? And then we build roadmaps and software solutions that help our customers solve those, those uh, emerging trends and the applications that they're trying to address for the future products that they're building. 
And then we tie that into our roadmap and the team does a great job on executing. Yeah, and, and, and I've been witness to that. I've seen the, first of all, the expansion. I mean, how many, how much has the developer ecosystem expanded with your software? I mean, this was probably one of yeah. the best indicators in any, any case of a company, especially when you're kind of trying to make that just being a raw hardware company to yeah. kind of a hardware software uh, developer stack. And I, I, gosh, I remember, like I said, from the first developer conference, I went to, to like the third or fourth. Like, is it, have you done three or four? Uh, we've done three now. Okay, the third. Yeah, I mean, it was like the first one. I mean, you know, this is a compliment. It was, like, it was small. It was a small number, yeah. but it was like a change of the guard. By the third yeah. one, it was like, oh my gosh, you've got some of the biggest companies, biggest partners showing up here because they're really seeing the value. I mean, yeah. I imagine the developer ecosystem growth has been a pretty strong indicator of everything you just talked about, but also is a strong indicator of kind of how much this platform has room for growth. Yeah, at our last developers conference, uh, we had a record over 6,000 registrants. And if you look at our developers ecosystem since we started this, uh, it's grown by 6x and it continues to grow as well. More and more companies and developers are adopting and building solutions for Lattice FPGAs. And uh, you saw that as well, that ecosystem of developers are not just people building soft IPs that can be programmed to our FPGAs. But it's also other semiconductor companies like the partnerships we talked about with NVIDIA and others where they're building reference designs and solutions now leveraging Lattice FPGAs as well. And then if you need a design house to help you build your system, well, they're trained on Lattice devices as well. So that ecosystem has grown tremendously. And that's something that we're going to actually continue to invest in because as we go into these new emerging trends around vision, around AI and security, we're finding more and more people needing assistance because these are complex things. These are emerging. People are learning. And so we're investing more in our ecosystem to help our customers get these new applications into market as well. Well, Sam, we've got just a couple of minutes left here. We'd love to sort of hear where you see this going next. Uh, how much does AI continue to shift your business? Um, give us a little taste of what we can expect. Well, I tell you what, what I tell uh, my employees and colleagues here is I truly believe the best of times are to come. When you look at what's happening in our industry, uh, what we're doing in Lattice around security, around AI, around vision, our new products that we're introducing, all the solutions that we're bringing to market with our software solution stacks, what we're enabling, I think the most exciting times are to come. And uh, we're going to continue to work closely with our customers, with our ecosystem partners, and continue to make a difference in our industry. Well, Sam, you know, every uh, time we connect, I become a little bit more enlightened in what you're doing. And I continue to see, you know, you literally connecting the dots across uh, so many different areas. It's been great to watch the success. It's been a, you know, an interesting couple of years, the market as a whole. And, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, I, I like that you kind of gave Shout to all the team. Uh, of course, it's been good to get to know Ford uh, Tamer, your new CEO. Um, it looks like uh, the market's sort of finding shape. AI has sort of been an accelerator. I think we're also going to start to see some of those markets that were slower coming back. And I think uh, even just the last quarter uh, that we talked, some of the results were starting to show that um, semis is, is back um, beyond just the AI chips. Like there is actually a lot going on. And you know, everything in, in FPGA is you continue to be one of the companies. It's one of the only actually at this point that's really focused entirely on this particular space. Um, and I expect to continue to see good results. So, Sam, thanks so much for joining us at this six months. So let's uh, let's make sure we do this again. We should. We should. I really enjoy what you guys do around this summit. It is informative to me when I listen to the other guests as well. And so I really appreciate you having us here and look forward to next year as well. We look forward to having you back. Thanks for joining Thank us. You. We're going to head off for a little break here. Uh, stick with us here at the Six Five Summit.